I'm dead. You were, but I brought you back. What are you? A non-corporeal extraterrestrial consciousness. You destroyed my vessel, and until you help me fix it, we're both stuck here. Oh no, I need to get out. What even is this place? A fractured world. A non-linear progression of rifts. Each a different reality. With different rules, different dangers. both get out of here. Did you lie? I'm sorry, but this isn't over. Lost Between Worlds is going to be a new chapter for Danny Rojas and the player, where we're going to take what they know about Yara we're going to rip it to pieces and we're going to fuse it back together again with this extraterrestrial story which throws Danny and the player into these different situations. Danny goes to investigate a meteorite and discovers it's not a meteorite at all, it's actually spacecraft. And this spacecraft contains an extraterrestrial named Faye. We have a name. Uh, this vessel that they come across in the forest is going to end up getting them trapped. I and mean, they're going to be trapped inside what we call the encasement. Kind of like a protection protocol to protect Faye. Danny learns that she's going to be there for at least five million years. Five million. I, I got shit to do. I need out of here. Danny Roja needs to repair Faye's vessel by gathering five shards that were broken off when Danny shot the vessel when first encountering it. Each of these shards can only be reached by traversing a series of rifts, which are fractured simulations of the world of Yara injected with extraterrestrial simulation elements, such as obscene amounts of lightning, moving cities that would normally be above land underwater, and each of the different rifts is going to bring a new, fresh, different experience that's really going to push survival. You're going to have to overcome combat, you're going to have to parkour, you're going to have to solve puzzles. The gameplay is highly varied. It puts Danny in situations that we haven't seen before. And Danny's been in some pretty strange situations, so, you know, that's saying a lot. Each rift's got something different about it that's going to give you a new surprise. Uh, one of the ones that stands out to me is, is Storm Runner, where you'd get dropped in, it's nighttime. At first, things look kind of normal, and you're like, okay, what's happening? And you step out into the rain, and boom! You get almost struck to death by a lightning strike, and it turns out that as part of the simulation being damaged, that particular rift was there to gain knowledge about weather and weather systems. So now you've got to try and work out your path, moving from safety spot to safety spot, defending yourself against shard faces, which are the defense units that the, the vessel's basically employed and, and spawned to, to protect itself against you. So to collect the five shards, you've got to jump through the different rifts, and each of the rifts has got two portals, a purple one and an orange one, and they're in different places in the rift. And to get to them, there'll be different puzzles to solve, there'll be different objectives. And then you, as a player, you get to decide which one of the portals you're going to jump through. And that's going to lead you through to get to one of the shards. If you're successful, you bring that back to Faye. 
cool things are going to happen. You're maybe going to get, uh, you know, some superpowers and some, some new gear, new tools that are going to help you next time you go through. And then you can use the rift map to then decide, okay, I, I didn't go that way last time, I'll go that way. Or I did go that way and I know that's got something cool in it, so I'm going to jump in there again. I'm going to use my fractal bomb, which is maybe one of the tools that you can collect. It's going to give you shortcuts through that rift. You can start to master the rift. So each time you come back with a shard, you get more powerful, you get more knowledgeable, and you start to be able to carve your own path as you work your way through the rifts. We wanted something that was easy to pick up, easy to get into, that develops nuance and depth and encourages mastery over time. We landed on a color combat mechanic of red and blue. I can swap between that ammo on the fly, or I can have weapons set up with one ammo or another. And these very simple, straightforward choices allow for the development of strategy and mastery as you learn which enemy archetypes are going to be which color because they're all either red or blue. There are none that are both. You'll find that certain approaches and strategies are more appropriate for you in that moment. Sometimes you need to stand and fight. Sometimes you need to run and gun. Sometimes you want to stealth. Sometimes you just need to run. We knew there would be accessibility concerns that we needed to tackle. And so we've leveraged a host of features to ensure that everyone can customize the experience to meet their needs and continue to enjoy that core mechanic of Lost Between Worlds. So there will be moments in Lost Between Worlds where you will die. You'll take a wrong turn and you'll end up dropping to your death in a bubbling pool of lava somewhere. And you may be thinking at that point, oh, I'm so close to getting a shard and I'm gonna, now I'm gonna go all the way back to the encasement and I'm gonna go back to Faye, I'm gonna lose my weapons, I'm gonna lose my gadgets and I'm gonna have to start out. You probably have grasped this, but time isn't linear. I live, I die. So you can go back to Faye and you can do the run again, you can use the shortcuts you've unlocked and you can work your way back through the rifts. You could try a different path and avoid that rift altogether. Or you can use what we call glints. So spread throughout the rifts are these small, shimmering, cool things that, that make this really interesting sound. So they always catch your attention no matter where they are, but quite often they'll be out of the way. So if you go off and explore the rifts and you actually spend time looking in some of the nooks and crannies, those glints then become something that you can use to retry a rift where you are. So you can save your progression by using the glints that will let you retry a rift. So as you play more, you collect more glints you get more powerful, you find more shortcuts, and each of these different parts make you more powerful and allow you to get quicker and quicker at going off and finding the shards and repairing the vessel. I see. Players are gonna have to navigate many of the rifts more than once. And we knew that from the beginning, so we wanted to make sure that there was a uh, development and a growth to that experience. First and foremost, we wanted the rifts to be something players could learn and master. So after you've collected your first shard, you've, you've done a successful run, you've survived, and, and as part of that scenario, you're gonna get a new tool. And those tools include a rift key, a fractal bomb, and a grapple hook. The rift key can be used to open doors, doors that seem out of place many times. Once you have the key, you can go right through and find a shortcut. The fractal bomb allows crystal walls to be destroyed by the players allowing you to find new routes through levels, allowing you to find upgraded weapons and other goodies such as gadgets. And the grapple hook unlocks new routes as well. And this is all part of the process of as you collect shards and you bring them back, you get more powerful. You take new routes through the rifts that you've been through before that give you a new experience. The primitive human form is valuable. Yeah, this primitive form gets shit done. So when the narrative team was tasked with creating an extraterrestrial character. There were many different archetypes to consider. And ultimately we landed on an archetype for Faye that revolved around the superior AI who believes that humans are quite primitive. If the protocol actually kills you, think of what I'll learn then. But we decided to put a spin on that. Players will find the outcome kind of unexpected, a little bit terrifying without spoiling anything. Ultimately, I hope they're satisfied by the story and the journey that they've gone on in Lost Between Worlds. We wanted to put Danny in a situation where it was them 
and with a little help from Faye, really have to go on this journey together. And it's really about discovering a little bit more about who they are and their relationship and their arcs and how they change throughout the, the, the narrative. Has your sloppy meat brain forgotten how to reach this cavern? We had the entire team pitching level concepts and these concepts uh, were developed alongside the story itself. We really got to build something unique, surreal, off of a process that I think was quite successful. <laughs>